Veritasium made a video about how bicycles balance. He had a special bicycle made so the steering can be locked so it only turns in one direction, or locked so it doesn't turn at all. The conclusion of this video is that steering is the most important thing for balancing on a bicycle. Essentially you steer to catch yourself as the bike tips in either direction, and bicycles can also steer to stay upright by themselves due to the geometry of the front wheel and the steering position which leads to the front of the pivot point. With the steering locked, it's impossible to balance for any length of time, even if you want to ride in a straight line. But what about if we make a bike with two wheels that steer? It seems like it would steer and balance okay if the wheels rotated in opposite directions so they steer in the same direction, but what about if they rotated in the same direction so you could drift sideways? Would you still be able to balance? So in this video I'm going to make a bike which has both modes of steering. I need to make sure both wheels steer at the same angle so the wheels don't try to drive apart from each other, so I'm going to apply the leading wheel geometry to both wheels so they both point forwards. And I'm also going to make this a two wheel drive e-bike so the wheels can maintain the same velocity and one doesn't lag the other. Also, so I can switch modes and have the back wheel either copy or mirror the front wheel's motions, the back wheel is going to be driven by a powered servo, and that means that I can switch modes while riding it with some switches on the handlebars. So I thought about modifying an existing bike or a scooter or something like that, but due to the back wheel steering in the end it was easier just to build the whole thing from scratch. So yeah, it's made out of box section steel, I don't have a tube notcher or a tube bender at the moment. So basically it's going to be far too heavy duty, but hopefully then it won't break and nothing will go wrong when I'm doing the testing. And it is just a test rig to test out the principle of how bicycles balance. So I've got some box section steel for most of it, which is 5025 box. Just going to deburr it there with a power file and an angle grinder. These parts are actually going to insert into 3D prints, so I want to make sure they're nice and clean and clean before I weld them. I'm going to be using 10 inch hoverboard wheels to drive this for the front and back powered wheels. So I'm doing the normal thing here of drilling a big hole which the hoverboard stub can insert through and then attaching a nut basically in the other way. So I'm just going to tap that there with a bit of cutting compound. That means we can put an 8mm nut in and we can weld the nut on essentially so that we can screw a bolt in and that's nicely backed up and strong and that will grip the stub on the hoverboard motor. And I've done this in quite a few projects recently if you check out the recent projects in my channel. We've got some funny angles to make here so I've got a bit of a crank in the upright so that I can get the hoverboard wheel directly below the pivot point. So I've got some 45 degree angles which are of course 22 and a half degrees cutting that box section and that welds up to make the 45 degree angle. So basically what we end up with after we've welded all of those funny joints is a kind of crank shaped piece and that means that the hoverboard motor can fit directly below the main upright piece. And I'm using 10 inch hoverboard motors which have a pneumatic tyre. So that of course fits into the big hole I drilled and the bolt goes in the other way backed up by that nut so that it grips the flat on the shaft. And that means that hoverboard motor is directly in line with that upright shaft and everything will rotate on the spot. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project. We've got several bearings here and they're pretty heavy duty ones. So normal bearings and we've also got thrust bearings. And that'll allow the whole thing to take my weight. These are made in three layers, a bottom runner, a row of ball bearings and a top runner. And that allows force to be pressed down on the top and for it to take that load. I need something for the thrust bearings to rest on though, so I'm just going to cut a slot in the box section steel and essentially put a tab in each side, which then gets welded on, and that makes a little platform to support the thrust bearing. And the other side of the thrust bearing will have the frame resting on it. There are some other parts with some pretty complex geometries, and the easiest way for me to make those is with 3D printing. These are PLA parts, but I'm using a 1.2mm nozzle, and you can see how fat the extrusions are there, and that makes the parts really tough. So just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. These are mainly the pieces which bearings are going to go in, but we also have to make some pulleys, and that's so we can get feedback to a pot for the joints, and also feedback so we can actually drive the servo to the right position. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out 3dfuel.com. So yep, I've also welded up a ridiculously heavy duty bike frame to go between the back and front wheels. It's nothing like a bike frame really, in that it's made of square bits instead of triangle bits, but it's going to be really strong so I don't think there's going to be any problems at all. 
These big pieces have bearings inserted into them and as usual what I've done is made a smaller shim piece with a finer nozzle so I can get the tolerance accurate and if it isn't then I don't have to reprint that whole part which took about 11 hours each. So a bit of a hint there for 3D printing large parts. So I've got bearings fitted into those and the down facing parts also have a place for that thrust bearing to go in so that it's all held centrally and it won't slip out. And of course the bottom of that goes onto the metal parts. In there we've got some inserts for my 5025 steel so that I can put a square axle in essentially and we've also got the square axle shape here for the rest of the frame. I've left slots in these parts so there's some flexibility and it's much easier to get them in. And if it wasn't for that slot I'd never be able to put them on at all and get the tolerances right. So there are bolt holes you can see there. I was going to bolt through the metal as well but I don't think I'm going to have to because they're a really really tight fit. So there's that frame with its four pivot points and my two steering columns and I've also left a little stub there for the saddle. So we've now got one of the steering columns in with that wheel on its crank shaped shaft and you can see the metal resting on the thrust bearing. That of course goes the other way up so the wheel is facing down and the thrust bearing is on the bottom. And we've got those other bearings in their other bearing holders for both the front and back steering columns. So yep that's that thrust bearing sitting on the bottom and of course it's the same on both ends of the bike. The handlebars are fitted on with another 3D printed clamp section and I'll come back and talk about the switches and controls later in the video. So now we've got something that pretty much resembles a bike and both the wheels basically point forwards like they do on the front wheel of a normal bike. So pretty sure I'm going to be able to ride that like a normal bike but now we need to sort out the control so that we can turn the back wheel as we turn the front wheel in various directions. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Potenticus. I love building prototypes and showing how they work on YouTube, but have you ever thought that your ideas could have potential to be a real product? If you have, the first step you should take is doing some research to check if someone else had the same idea already, and to look at any relevant patterns to see if the intellectual property was protected by someone else. If you're the first one with the idea and you want to develop it further, what comes next is filing a patent, but patents are very costly and complicated. However, there are other easier and much cheaper ways to protect your intellectual property, and maybe it isn't as difficult as you think. You can learn about this topic with the Potenticus game app. Potenticus was developed to help investors get a better understanding about the topic of intellectual property rights. The app offers a fun and easy to use game that will teach you how to protect your idea and help you get your ideas to the next level. In the game section you'll progress from a law school graduate to a highly respected patent attorney by learning about the various topics of intellectual property rights and helping your customers with their IP issues. The FAQ section provides you quick answers and dedicated information to your specific questions. The app provides easy to understand information and gives you lots of examples. So far the app's content has been specifically adapted to UK and Germany law. The app is available from both Google Play and the Apple App Store and it's free of charge and no personal data is collected. So Potenticus is a great way to get insights and information about protecting your ideas. Check out the links to the App Store provided in this video to download the app and learn how to make the most out of your ideas. Note that the use of Potenticus is not legal advice and should not and cannot replace it. Right, let's get back to this bike. To do that we need some way of measuring the position of the steering wheels and also the back wheel steering column so we can position it accurately. So I've got a potentiometer with a big pulley attached. And that runs one to one on another pulley which is on each of those steering columns. So there's the one on the handlebars and we've also got the same thing on the back wheel. But as well as feedback we're going to need to power it. So I've got a windscreen wiper motor fitted on another 3D printed bracket and that has a sprocket on. So there is a chain drive and yes it's held on with zip ties and that's a bit like a hardware fuse because it means if there's too much force or something goes wrong then the zip tie snaps and it doesn't burn out the motor, strip the gears or burn out the motor driver. Controlling this is an Arduino Uno with a lot of wires attached to its I.O. We've got a BTS 7960 motor driver, a VESC on each of the wheels and yes we've got two batteries because it was just easier that way to put two LiPos on. The wiper motor is 12 volts and I'm running that off the same battery but I only ever run an analogue value on the Arduino of 127 out of 255 so on average it never gets more than 12 volts. 
I've got a brake kind of lever there and that pulls a string which pulls a micro switch and that reverses the main drive wheels which is the closest thing I've got to a brake. I've also got a twist grip on the right hand side there which is the main throttle. The two switches are for the two steering modes so the back wheel either copies or mirrors the front wheel. So now with the switches off if I move the front wheel then it should ride like a normal bike with both wheels electric and normal steering. Switching the first switch makes the back wheel copy the front wheel so they rotate in the same direction and steer in different directions. And if we switch on the other mode then basically they mirror each other so they rotate in opposite directions but they steer in the same direction so the bike goes round in an arc. Turning both switches off always makes the back wheel go straight and it operates like a normal bike again. But the real challenge is going to be in copying mode to see if I can actually ride on the bike and steer and balance. This is a bit of an experimental thing and this is just a test so first of all we've got our control for the experiment which is riding the bike like a normal bike with the back wheel fixed in position and the front wheel steering as you'd expect and both wheels are still powered. So as you'd expect I can ride that like a normal bike and I can turn and do all the things you'd expect. I could have done with somewhere to put my feet up really but it's actually not bad having them there on the ground so that I can put them out really easily if I happen to fall over. But so far that rides like a normal bike. It's not particularly fast, that's about the top speed, but I'm only running on a 6S LiPo and the motors are rated for 10S. But it seems to be okay and feels quite safe, and my braking strategy also seems to work quite well. Right, it's time for the first funny driving mode, and that is both wheels rotating in opposite directions, so hopefully they steer in the same direction, and I think this should be perfectly fine to ride, because it still steers as you'd expect it to. Well, it took a bit of getting used to because you tend to oversteer. What you really need to do, of course, is steer half the amount you want to because both wheels are steering, which steers you twice as much as you'd expect. Also, it's a bit like a rear wheel steering vehicle where the back swings out, so it's quite easy to get into a sort of snake motion, although you can make some quite tight turns now. So, just doing some practicing, going around in circles, but obviously the bike still balances and you can ride a bike with two steering wheels that both steer in the same direction and rotate in the opposite direction, so that works perfectly well. Now it's time for mode 3, which is of course the wheels turning in the same direction and we don't really know what's going to happen here. But there we go, let's give that a ride and see how it goes. So initially it seemed to work okay and I could balance on it, my feet are off the ground and I'm going along, but then something happened to it, so let's see what's happened there, and it looks like the back wheel's gone all loose. But yeah, it was that safety zip tie that's broken, so I'm going to fix that up and have another go, and yeah, I can still balance on it, although it seems to always turn in one direction, and that probably means that the wheels aren't tracking perfectly in a straight line, so one is steering more than the other, and that's causing it to go around in circles. But in any case, you can see that I am riding the bike, my feet are off the ground, and I'm balancing on it, and it seems to be going along. But then there was a bit of a disaster, I was going to put a GoPro on this to um, see that we could see the wheels turning, but unfortunately some of the plastic has broken. So yeah, we've lost the motor mount for the steering motor, and we've also lost the clamp on the handlebars. So it looks like we've proved we can balance with the wheels rotating in the same direction, but I wanted to do some more testing. So I went away and reprinted those parts, and then I tried to ride the bike by riding it normally and then switching on the two-wheel steering mode. And initially it was far worse than it was before. However, it looks like the wheels aren't tracking perfectly in the same direction, so after a few adjustments and a bit more practice, I managed to ride the bike quite successfully. So I found this not too hard to ride if I ride in normal mode and then I switch on two wheel steering mode when I'm already going in a straight line and then it's possible to balance for quite some distance. And this is probably because if I try and steer too much with both wheels turning in the same direction it makes the back swing out so I'm almost travelling sideways more and more like a hoverboard almost but without the active balancing which makes it really hard to balance. So doing it this way means that actually it's not too hard to ride and I can do some long runs. 
Well, I wasn't expecting the second mode to be of much practical use, but it does show you can balance on a bicycle with two wheels steering, even if those wheels point in the same direction. And of course you can't turn because they need to point in opposite directions or just one steer for that, but it is an interesting experiment. Two wheel steering where they both steer in the same direction, that second mode is actually quite useful, I guess, for making tighter turns, but it's a bit crazy to ride because it feels really unnatural. In any case, it's been an interesting experiment and I'm gonna put all the CAD and code up as I usually do on my GitHub if you wanna see how any of the electronics work or anything like that. So if you wanna support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then you can and those links are in the description as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members get access to all the videos up to a week early as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of that discussion. All right, that's all for now.